Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar where we will be discussing the opioid algorithm. The opioid epidemic is a global problem and burden on healthcare. According to CNN.com, roots of the problem traces back to the release of a proposed newer, safer alternative to traditional painkillers in the 1990s, OxyContin. Regardless of how it was originally marketed, the use of newer opioids represented a change in how healthcare providers perceive pain management. Since the 1990s, science has revealed a darker side of the equation. Opioids possess significant addictive qualities, giving rise to their vast abuse. As the epidemic grew and damaged lives, not to mention the death toll, it became clear a new approach to treating the problem was necessary. The opioid algorithm is this new approach, combining life-saving skills with overdose-specific guidelines to increase survival chances. The opioid algorithm requires the rapid identification of symptoms associated with opioid overdose. As explained by Medline Plus, symptoms may include altered mental status or lethargic behavior, pinpoint pupils, extreme pallor and clammy skin, inability to control one's own body or experiencing extreme limpness, excessive vomiting or making noises like gurgling, choking, or gasping without a reasonable explanation, the appearance of a purple or bluish hue on the fingernails or lips reflecting decreased cardiac output, inability to be awakened or speak, diminished breathing or slow heart rate, respiratory or cardiac arrest. When these symptoms appear, it's necessary to activate the chain of survival. Depending on your location, this may involve calling 911, activating your facility's code team, or shouting for help. If you're alone, attempt to get another person's attention to assist with activating the chain of survival. Most especially if you are unable to reach 911 on your own device. When recognizing the signs of opioid overdose, it will be necessary to begin the steps of CPR. However, the opioid algorithm advises to begin CPR only if the person is unresponsive, not breathing at all, or gasping. When performing CPR alone, continue to perform CPR for a period of two minutes. At this point, it's acceptable to leave the person momentarily to contact 911. In addition, obtain the AED, provided one is available, as well as naloxone. Administering naloxone can feel overwhelming. For those that lack the licensure to routinely administer medications, administering this medication represents a significant change in basic set. However, it is essential that the victim receives the medication as soon as possible. Furthermore, naloxone is generally given via nasal spray or injection into the muscle. The injured nasal delivery is 2 mg in each nostril total of 4 mg. The intramuscular injection is 0.4 milligrams to 2 milligrams. Until help arrives, continue to continue, excuse me, to re-administer naloxone every four minutes if necessary. After administering naloxone, the opioid algorithm advises to reassess responsiveness of the victim. If the victim begins to breathe regularly, moans, or moves purposefully, it is appropriate to move forward to step five. However, a lack of responsiveness warrants a return to step two, continuing CPR and BLS until help arrives or the victim becomes responsive. Even though the person has exhibited a sign of responsiveness, it is important to maintain control over the situation and close vigilance. Attempt to stimulate the person, asking them to move, respond to questions, talk, or perform another simple task. The goal is to keep the person awake and engaged. This was effectively eliminate the need to continuously check for a pulse and assess breathing. At any point, the person could re-enter the state of unresponsiveness. This is the result of the continued release of opioids into the bloodstream following ingestion. Depending on the mode of ingestion, the person could easily re-enter the overdose state. Thus, it is important to maintain a close watch and respond accordingly. If the person returns to an unresponsive state or begins to exhibit the signs of respiratory distress, such as gasping or respiratory arrest, return to step two. The next step is the addition of routine CPR and BLS skills to the algorithm. This may include the use of an AD, following the instructions for pad placement per the device and administering a shock if the person enters cardiac arrest with a shockable rhythm. In addition, following the standards for two-person CPR and switching between chest compressions and administering rescue breaths. 
For those following the two-minute practice of administering chest compressions and switching places with a second responder between administering rescue breaths, the specification for the administration of naloxone every four minutes can easily be tracked. Simply administer naloxone after completing two switches. The final step in the opioid algorithm is not necessarily spelled out within the AHA re released. However, it is essential to maximizing chances of recovery. Healthcare professionals should follow the routine post-resuscitation care guidelines for someone that has suffered either cardiac or respiratory arrest. This includes the ongoing treatment of reversible causes of arrest, and while naloxone provided the immediate mechanism of action to retreat the reversible cause of arrest, the process lacks value if not applied to help the person treat their addiction. Essentially, following the post-resuscitation care guidelines for monitoring, monitoring excuse me, management of other conditions and support implies a need to help the person find and obtain follow-up care within an appropriate organization or treatment facility. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. Don't forget we offer online CPR certification. You can find a link in the description. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be on your own time with an online course or in an in-classroom setting. So thank you guys again. We hope to catch you the next time.